So what is going on guys, I am Black Ops Amazing, welcome back to another Zombies video where today we are going to be talking about the Apothecan Blood, the reason why the ship crashed in Call of the Dead or Tag Der Toten, Dr. Anton Gersh, Harvey Yeena, Group 935 and much more. So as always if you enjoyed today's video, a like rating would be appreciated, make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest videos on the channel, but without further ado, let's get into it. Here we go. So, so far in Tag Der Toten, I have covered all of the radios and reels on my channel from Edward Richthofen to Jebediah Brown and the ones from Pablo Marinus. I've done all of those on the channel and the only ones left are the five radios from Gersh and Yina. The conversations between these two characters tell us more about the Apothecan Blood, which is the main reason why the ship crashed in Tag Der Toten. They also mention Group 935, the Ascension Base. We learn that whilst working for Group 935, Yina was actually spying on them. We're told more about the Space Monkeys and much more. So as always, I'm going to play them to you and then I'll come back and explain what's going on after. We have verified authenticity of this transmission, yes? Yes, Anton. A recon unit traveled to the old facility. Apparently, a survivor has been living there since the end of the war. Since the end of the war? Thirteen years? How can this be true? And how did we not know about this? Unfortunately, your guess is as good as mine. And his proposal? This, uh, uh Garthen device? What do you make of this? Personally, it sounds too good to be true. But... This isn't the first I've heard of it. Dr. Richtofen had mentioned it as well. Just think, Harvey. A device capable of granting that which any man desires. I simply think it and bang. It is reality. We could beat Americans to group 935 Lunar Facility. We could become leaders of free work overnight. The potential, it is certainly infinite. So... He says he will construct the vice, but first he needs... he needs us to find something. He says we must bring him the blood of an ancient creature. He gave us the coordinates. It's at the bottom of the ocean. Recovery will not be cheap. Well, we do not need the creature. Only its blood. Harvey, do not worry. The reward will pay cost tenfold. This is how the Ascension Group leads charged into New World. I understand. And there was one more thing. He warned us to bring him the blood straight away. When exposed to the elements for extended amounts of time, it becomes volatile and unstable. He warned us the blood is alive. Let us worry about collecting it first. We will decide the next move after this, Dr. Yina. Of course, Dr. Gersh. I trust your trip was success. Like you wouldn't believe, Anton. What we found down there. The creature was magnificent. Gargantuan in size. It was otherworldly. A remnant of a different age. Oh, I wish you could have seen it. It was at the coordinates provided. Yes. 43 North, 180 East. The blood has a fluidity to it that I find fascinating. We would have investigated further, but we intercepted a transmission that the Americans were in the area. Somehow they'd been informed about the creature's location. Ah, these damn leaks. They will be our undoing. It seems every step we take, the Americans follow suit. Mark my words. There is a mole in Ascension, Harvey. We must strike it out before it destroys us. Get a team together. People we trust. If we are to study the blood, we must make sure the Americans do not find out. To study it? Anton, I think we should follow the plan and deliver the blood to the Siberian facility. Yet, Harvey. We cannot. This struggle with the Americans, we cannot let them get the advantage. This blood is our only leverage. After the war in Group 935 disbanded, you came to us. You came to me. You saw a better vision for the future here than what your America was offering. We created ascension on the principle of being better men, of making this world a better place. If this blood is key to unlocking the future, we would be fools to not take this opportunity. Perhaps you are right. At the very least, we can study it. What's the harm in that? 
Are the experiments coming, Dr. Rina? Fascinating, Anton. Truly fascinating. The blood, it's not so much fluid as it is very much alive. It moves, it changes shape at will, reacts to our touch. Alive? How is this possible? I'm not sure. One theory is perhaps the creature itself was more of a vessel, and that its blood is made up of a million different organisms that control it, like a crew piloting a ship. The creature died, but the organisms inside survived, trapped at the bottom of the ocean. Is it sentient? Yeah, how is it able to move? The blood uses negative space, which exists between the molecules. This negative space provides an influx of energy, which we believe fuels the blood, giving it the ability to move. Do you still believe this blood is suitable for our primates? For rocket testing? Absolutely. The blood gives them rejuvenation abilities, making them more powerful, stronger. If a monkey is on the brink of death and given an injection, it makes a full recovery in a matter of minutes. The only trade-off is they become more angry, hostile, even violent in some cases. Is this a problem? It's manageable. But I'm confident monkeys given an injection of this blood will survive spaceflight. Wonderful news. I think we can move on to the next phase of the program. We should prepare a serum for mass production. Can you tell me more about this negative space? We really don't know much about it, except that it does not exist in this dimension. Maybe a gateway from another. One of our men has theorized it might even be a black hole of sorts. Send what research you've done to myself and our weapons team. Be sure Yuri's voice key is included in the brief. Of course, but I will remind you we need to be careful. We've noticed the blood has been changing composition, as if reacting to all our probing and prodding. Reacting? How so? I'm not sure how to explain it, but it feels like the blood's getting... angry. Now, comrades, that is enough! Now, as it stands, we must account for the facts. Two days ago, one of our research facilities was attacked. All personnel are dead, with the exception of Dr. Gersh and Dr. Zavoisky, who are both still missing. What about foreign intruders? We do not know. They have not been recovered. Now, I know what Dr. Gersh and his work meant to this organization. However, all is not lost. We must remember that. All is not lost. We have no leader. Who is going to lead us now? You, an American? <laughs> yes. I'd remind you to think before you speak, comrade. I am one of the founding members of this organization, and you are someone who has forgotten their place in it. I am not saying I should lead it. Frankly, I would rather not. I would leave it to the committee to find a suitable replacement. However, with Americans, Broken Arrow grows stronger by the day. And we must act quickly if we are to stay ahead of them. What is it you are proposing? Some of you may remember four years ago a contact at an abandoned Group 935 facility reached out to us. He promised to construct the Agarthan device for us provided we brought him the blood of the beast. We never brought him the blood. Instead, we used it to fulfill our own needs. I propose I take a small crew and deliver the blood, as promised, to our ally in Siberia. With the Agarthan device in Soviet hands, we will not only end this Cold War overnight, we will bring humanity together and create a better world. This is Dr. Harvey Yena. It's the 1st of January, 1964. Happy New Year. We are 15 minutes out from the abandoned Group 935 Siberian facility, where I will deliver the blood, as promised, for the creation of the Agarthan device. After I have secured it, I have arranged for rendezvous with my handler who will take me back to American soil. 
Oh, it's been nearly 20 years. I can hardly remember my former life. After Group 935 disbanded, I had a choice. Come home, or turn to the Soviets and bury myself in the heart of their organization. I chose the latter. When again would America get such an opportunity? There was a moment back in 45, right after McCain was discovered, where I thought Dr. Richtofen had discovered the truth, that I was a spy. He, he was right, of course. But it turned out Dr. Richtofen had his own problems with Group 935. Oh, it's time to go back home. Darn it, if I'm not excited to eat a hot apple pie and catch a game of baseball. What the? Sir, he's broken containment! What on earth is going on? The blood. It broke containment. It started attacking the guards. Follow me. We need to move. Now! Go! So we start off with a conversation between Anton Gersh and Harvey Yina. This finally tells us Dr. Gershi's first name, and of course Harvey Yina we already knew about, but they're talking about constructing the Orgothan device. We've heard about this plenty of times by now. As they say in their own words, it is a device capable of granting that which any man desires. They simply think it and it happens. It is reality. Gersh wants to use it to beat the Americans and Group 935 to become leaders of the free world. However, the only person that has the plans and can construct it is Pablo Marinus, who we know is in Tag Der Toten. Pablo tells Gersh and Yina, in order to construct the device, he first needs something. That something is the blood of an ancient creature, and it can only be found at the bottom of the ocean. And so that's exactly what they do. They set up a recovery mission, dive down to the bottom of the ocean to recover the blood. Gersh says to Yina, I trust your trip was a success. Yina replies, like you wouldn't believe, Anton. What we found out there, the creature was magnificent, gargantuan in size. It was otherworldly, a remnant of a different age. And this blood that they took the creature from, we can see plans of on the ship. Right here, we can see a drawing of the divers traveling to the bottom of the ocean to collect blood from the Apothecum. This is the same monster that we saw in the skies of Revelations. Clearly it's been down here for a very, very long time, hundreds of years maybe. How exactly it got down here? Well, of course it died, it must have fell into the ocean. And actually, before all of this, a radio from Jebediah Brown, who was the creator of the Pack-a-Punch, he was the first one, back in 1885, to learn of the Orgothan device. The angels came to him and told him to construct it. They said to him he needs three things, the blood of an elder god, an elemental shard, and a metallic vessel to harness and carry both. They informed him that the blood could be found at the bottom of the ocean, however, he couldn't get there because he would perish. During that time of 1885, the technology for him wasn't available. But the Apothecan blood is that of an elder god. The Elder God is this. So anyway, Gersh and Yina collected the blood, but instead of taking it straight to Pablo as they were informed, Gersh decided he wanted to study it. He said if the blood is the key to unlocking the future, they would be fools not to take this opportunity. And so, that's what they did. Gersh says, how are the experiments coming, Dr. Yina? Yina replies, fascinating, Anton. Truly fascinating. The blood is not so much fluid as it is very much alive. It moves. It changes shape at will. It reacts to our touch. Gersh says, alive? How is that possible? And Yina says, I'm not sure. One theory is perhaps the creature itself was more of a vessel and that its blood is made up of millions of different organisms that control it. Kind of like a crew piloting a ship. The creature died, but the organisms inside survived, trapped at the bottom of the ocean. Gersh then says, do you believe that this blood is suitable for our primates, for rocket testing? Of course, he's talking about the monkeys that we see in Ascension. The Russians were sending them into space, and in the map we see them coming back down. And Yina replied, absolutely. The blood gives them rejuvenation abilities, making them more powerful, stronger. If a monkey is on the brink of death and given an injection, it makes a full recovery in a matter of minutes. The only trade-off is they become more angry, hostile, even violent in some cases. And he even says that given the injections of this blood, the monkeys will survive 
space flight. So that tells us how the space monkeys in Ascension survived going into outer space. They were injected with the Apothecum blood. It also explains why they are very aggressive. They're also stronger considering they're little tiny monkeys. They can do some actual damage to us. But anyway, as Gersh and Yina begin to carry on their experiments and investigate the blood, they begin to notice that it's changing composition, almost as if it's reacting to their probing and prodding. They feel as if the blood is getting angry, but still they continue. And then sometime after, I'm not too sure how many days, months or years, but the zombie outbreak happens at the Ascension base. All of the personnel there are killed. Of course, we know Dr. Gersh and Dr. Zavoyski went missing. Gersh was sucked into the Gersh device and became trapped in the Casmian mechanism. And so with it now just being Yina on his own and a number of research facilities attacked, the remaining scientists having no idea what was going on we're an uproar. And so Yina finally decides, as he promised, to deliver the blood to Pablo in Siberia so they can finally build the Orgothan device. And on the 1st of January 1964, we hear a radio from Yina where he tells us he is 15 minutes out from the abandoned Group 935 Siberian facility, where he is delivering the blood as promised for the creation of the Orgothan device. He also reveals to us in this radio that he was actually a spy for the Americans whilst working at Group 935. But as they're 15 minutes away from Tagdur Totun, the Apothecan blood on the ship becomes alive, breaks out of containment, and starts attacking everyone on board, ultimately killing them all. Yina and all of the remaining guards and sailors die. The blood kills them. And that explains exactly how it crashes into Tagdur Toten and also is snapped in half. And you can also see on the ship the metal box that the blood was contained in. There is a massive hole in the bottom where it's broke free, come alive, and you can see the people around here have almost frozen. The Apothecan blood killed everyone on board. And so, there we go, those are the final radios that we can find in this map. As always, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you have, drop a like rating. Make sure you are subscribed to stay up to date with the latest content on the channel. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Until then, goodbye.